welcome. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, this is a DC Blue Wave event with Gertrude Stein, Democratic Club of DC. Uh, we are thrilled today to be joined by Ann Johnson. Ann is a native Houstonian who has spent her career fighting for Texas, both in her early work as Harris County Chief, Chief Human Trafficking Prosecutor and in her work today representing the impoverished in our criminal justice system. Anne is running to represent House District 134 because we deserve a better advocate in the state legislature, one who will help our community overcome this crisis. Anne is the former chief of the human of human rights tra human right human trafficking section. I'm sorry, I'm going to start that over. Sorry. Anne is the former chief of the human trafficking section of the Harris County District Attorney's Office. She is now in private practice handling juvenile law, criminal law, and human trafficking related matters. She is also an adjunct professor of law at South Texas College of Law. She has a long history of standing up for the most vulnerable in our community, standing up to the worst human traffickers to protect child victims of exploitation. She is a cancer survivor who will be a relentless advocate in the legislature to expand health care, restore a woman's right to choose, pass common sense gun safety reforms, improve public education, and fight for our kids. Um, Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Um, if you could just tell us a little bit about yourself, um, why your district is winnable and what's gonna happen when you win that district. Great, thank you so much. And I'm so grateful to both of these organizations for the opportunity to talk to you about this critically important race of House District 134 in Houston, Texas. We are the number one targeted seat to flip in Democrats' efforts to take the state house, elect a Democratic speaker, and then be able to fight for the values that we hold so dear, including saving lives through expanding Medicaid, making sure that we restore health care to the millions of Texans who have gone without health care coverage. We have the highest rate of uninsured children in the nation. And so we can make a difference by breaking from the extreme partisanship of Governor Abbott and extending health care protections, including ensuring that people are not denied coverage for pre-existing conditions. As you mentioned, I lived that life as a cancer survivor. And I know how important these health care policy decisions are, not in just our everyday life, but look at the impact of what's having on COVID-19 on our lives and the failed policy decisions, not only Trump, but specifically in Texas. We also see that we have an opportunity to save lives with passing common sense gun reform. Because in Texas, we have been home to four of the top 10 mass shootings in the last two years in the United States. And yet our Republican legislature has remained loyal to the NRA, passing things like open carry, guns in schools, even making it easier for people to go out and get a silencer. They have been absolutely tone deaf to the epidemic of gun violence that not only are these mass shootings that we hear about on the national news, but the everyday impact that significantly impacts our communities of color. I am proud to be an every town endorsed candidate and will stand with Moms Act Demand Action to promote these provisions. We in Texas, we were talking earlier, but Texas actually has this great opportunity to be a leader in renewable energy. We are such a large state that we have West Texas winds, solar and coastal winds. We could be 80% renewable energy within 10 years if we just renew a commitment to making this again a bipartisan issue and put in infrastructure lines to allow for those corporations to take advantage of what they are calling the energy transition. And so Texas can be a leader in renewable energy and that's a win-win because it addresses the economic disadvantages that we are seeing at the moment and it addresses the issue of climate change. Let me tell you one of the biggest reasons why I am running. And that is because of public education. Because in Texas, we are drastically deficient in our commitment to our kids in public education. And I'll tell you, we've seen this movie in Texas. If y'all remember the recession after 2008, the down economy that we had, in Texas, we have the responsibility of passing a balanced budget. And so we're responsible for the money that's gonna be in the legislature based on the prior policy decisions. And so look at what we're facing when we go in in 2021. We're facing a down budget because of COVID. We're also facing a down budget because of a dependence upon oil. And so the last time the Republican legislature didn't have all the funds, 
They solved their issue by slashing $5.3 billion from public ed and slashing 10,000 teacher jobs. And you may be saying, well, Ann, we know Texas has done great economically. We've heard Republicans brag about how great Texas is for business. Tell me when they filled in the gap over this last decade for having to make that tough call. They never did. And so we are now facing an additional crisis on top of public ed, the lack of funding, with the fact that we now have a governor saying, hey, send kids back to school in the middle of this pandemic. And so parents are fed up with gun violence. Parents are fed up and terrified at the idea of having to send their kids back to uh, school under COVID. And parents are terrified at the idea of losing coverage for pre-existing conditions. So we are in a great position to win this race. And it is critical because we need to flip nine seats. I am running in a district where Beto won the seat by 60%. That's our high water mark. And Hillary Clinton won it by 55%. And so we are in a great position to win. And what we need is your support. We are showing our polling that we are ahead 44-42. But to get there further, we just need to continue to make this big push and talk about the issues that we care about. And let me tell you, this is not the first time I have taken on a really tough fight. Many years ago, I was appointed to represent a 13-year-old little girl charged with prostitution. I believed that that was wrong. And I began challenging that case. And as I challenged it, the people around me said, Ann, why do you even bother? You don't have a chance in changing this. And this is just the way we've done it for 25 years. And I said, well, the last court in the land is going to have to tell me so. I'm proud to tell you that after three years, we finally got that case to the Texas Supreme Court and we won. And when we won that case, it not only protected our client, created a decision that protected children in the nation, but it was called a case of first impression. It was a landmark decision nationwide that shifted the tide of how we feel about kids who are victims of sexual exploitation and recognizing the human trafficking. And so there is so much more that we can do. And when I do my training nationwide on this issue, people say, really, Texas? This groundbreaking decision protecting kids came out of Texas? And I say, absolutely. And I'm here to tell you that I fully expect we will win the Texas House. And let me tell you why that makes such a big difference to the rest of the nation. When we take the Texas House before 2021, we are there to balance out the extreme Republican gerrymandering that has put us in a position of sending far too many Republicans to Congress. And so even though we vote maybe 53% Republicans statewide, Republicans have gerrymandered our districts so much that we send two thirds of our congressional districts to the Republican Party by about an 80% guarantee. And so all we're wanting is a fair ground. And when we create a fair and level playing field in Texas, it not only shifts the framework of Texas, but it's a groundswell for the nation. And it's a benefit for the things that we carry so dearly. And so I'm excited that we can not only fight for these issues in Texas, but we can give us room to advance these issues nationally. Um, I don't even know where to start. All of that was incredible. Um, so we haven't even touched on what you might accomplish for LGBTQ people in your state. Um, I think maybe that's where we can start. I mean, there's a lot to unpack in what you just said, um, but I think we'll, we'll get to it all. Um, so Texas, Lawrence v. Texas. This mm -hmm. is, you guys are, I mean, we, we, the state that we worked in before was Virginia, which is, of course, loving v. Virginia. You are infamous in your own right um, as a state. Um, do you want to talk a little bit about um, what's at stake for LGBTQ folks in Texas? Of course. And so let me tell you, uh, let me give you this story. Mm -hmm. It'll give you some background on, on where things have been in Texas. Um, I actually ran for this seat before back in 2012. And when I ran for the seat in 2012, I ran because I was inspired by my Republican opponent's Tea Party stance to fight Obamacare at every turn and slash our budgets, despite the fact that she was in slashing a budget that protected kids in mental health court that I was defending at the time. And when I stepped up to run against her, the lines were drawn to be a 51% Republican lean. And I believed strongly that we could take that seat and win it. I was also one of two open out candidates at the time. And never before had Texas elected an out candidate. And so it was an important moment in Texas history. And our House District, House District 134, the border on the eastern side of the district was our Montrose community. 
And so some of you may know that Montrose is our traditionally GLBT community in Houston. And so there was a lot of energy and enthusiasm around our race. And while we were running a great campaign, about midway through the race, even though we were never challenged in the court redistricting case, all of a sudden, we got pushed from a 51 to a 57% Republican lean, and they plucked out our Montrose precincts. They then ran around saying, well, hey, that Ann Johnson girl will go away and leave us alone now. And I said, oh, hell no. You don't know who you messed with. And we pushed really hard. We pushed on issues of choice. We pushed on issues of equality. And we got almost 2,000 more votes than President Barack Obama in our district. And so we had a great campaign. Um, I am proud of the work that we did. And I'm also proud to tell you that Mary Gonzalez from El Paso was elected state representative at that time. And so we did win that historical moment of electing our first out candidate. And we have made progress since then. One of the first things that I will do upon being elected is join, and I knocked on wood, uh, is join uh, the LGBT caucus. And I'm excited to participate in advancing the interests of our community. And so you have probably seen, um, we have had um, a governor who has gone after what he calls the bathroom bill. Uh, we've had continued restrictions from our Texas Supreme Court, even after uh, Lawrence versus Texas and the United States Supreme Court stepped in, even after Oberfeld that protected our right to marry. We have had the Texas Supreme Court in a case called Pigeon versus Turner um, come back and say, hey, if you're, um, a same-sex marriage and you work for the city, you're not allowed to have health benefits. And so even though the nation has allowed us to make progress, we still see local provisions that have cut back our success. And so I will fight for the protection of all that are deserving of equality, all that are in a vulnerable position, for protect, vulnerable position to be protected, um, not just our LGBT community, um, but all of those who need us to step up for them in Texas. Thank you. That's amazing. Um, yeah, it's, I think we're discovering not just in this COVID moment, but we are only as strong as our weakest laws. So when Louisiana passes an anti-choice bill that works its way up, we all start to nail bite and worry about those rights. When it comes to LGBTQ rights, we are only as strong as our last Supreme Court decision. So it's essential that we really um, be going forward on all fronts. Um, so Thomas has a question. Thomas, do you want to ask it or do you want me to just read it off? Okay. Um, do you think Medicaid expansion is possible in the near future for Texas? Absolutely. Um, we are one of now, what, 11 states that I think we're down to, 12 at best, um, who have not done Medicaid expansion. And part of the reason that we haven't done Medicaid expansion is because Governor Abbott didn't want to do it. And the Republicans have stayed beholden to him on this partisan promise. Let me tell you what it's done. It's kept $100 billion from coming into Texas over the last decade. Um, it's literally left us with the highest rate of uninsured children and millions uninsured. And I think especially in this moment of COVID, um, everybody is starting to recognize and the medical community is seeing the strain on restricting our ability to fund healthcare and the fact that people just need coverage. And that's one of the things that's so shocking to me about our current Republican incumbent and partisanship, which is you really want to fight to deny people with a pre-existing condition. And so if you look at the Supreme Court case right now that is trying to undo Obamacare for the entire nation, that too is coming out of Texas, out of the urging our Republican legislature. And so it's time that we move beyond it. And the only way we can do it is by taking the Texas House. But for the last couple of sessions, we have seen the promotion of the idea of Medicaid expansion. So I fully expect that when we take the house, you'll be able to see these healthcare promises advance um, and begin to, to push the issue. Um, it's the right time for us to do it. Um, so I would like to hear a little bit more. You mentioned gerrymandering and how that deeply impacted your last election. Um, something that uh, I've been doing this work because of it. Um, it's 2020, we're trying to get the census done. When that happens, we're going to be redistricting our democracy for the next decade. Uh, Texas is notorious, not, maybe not everyone on this call understands that, but you just gave us a great example of how um, the power of state legislatures to literally pick their elections and who's, who's voting for who. 
Uh, can you talk a little bit about what you hope to do going forward to uh, protect voters' rights to, I mean, gerrymandering creates voter disenfranchisement. We all saw stories um, about the Texas primary, how people were waiting in line for 10 hours mm -hmm. to just cast a primary vote. Um, can you talk a little bit about that? And I think the, the last thing I want to touch on is just canvassing and co I mean, campaigning during COVID. We can okay. get to that later, but if it, it goes, if it goes hand in hand, that would be great too. Yeah, Texas is notorious for voter suppression. And so I think the biggest form of voter suppression that you have is gerrymandering. And so for example, my mother and father, one of the most important things and lessons I was taught was you go vote. And so some of my earliest memories is going to vote and getting in that big booth, being able to flip that lever and put that big curtain behind you. Um, and it was important to go vote. And so I go vote. But let me tell you, I live in CD2 in Texas that is currently represented by Dan Crenshaw. And for the last decade that I have gone to vote, I have pretty much known the outcome before I ever went in, which was the Republican was going to win that race. But I go vote. Think about if you live in an area where you already know the outcome, you're already being told your one vote doesn't matter. And so maybe you don't go because you think, why should I bother? Because we know who's going to win. And so gerrymandering to me is the greatest form of voter suppression. We're going to have to fight like dogs to protect it in 2021. We're going to have the census return and we might be in a position in Texas of picking up three seats. And again, if we see the movie from what they did 10 years ago, Republicans will get two and they'll give one to a Democrat. And that's the way they've parsed it out. And so our fight is to say, no, 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 no. We're going to make, that would be almost 39, maybe 40 congressional members from Texas. We're going to make this fair. We're going to let people vote this out. And so that's going to be holding our ground as the House, having a Democratic speaker, being part of this redistricting plan and taking up the fight. That's immediately right now for 2021. But let me tell you what else I'd like to see happen. I would like to see us move to an independent commission drawing the lines. I don't want to see us do it. It makes no sense to me to have the politician who has the personal benefit of the lines get to draw them. That makes no sense when we think about either public service or fairness. And so get rid of it. Give it to an independent commission, let them draw them, and let's fight fair. And you know what? I'm not afraid to fight fair. Because when you talk about the issues we care about, guess what? People in the middle agree. And so we've gotten so extreme in our districts that we can't even talk to each other. So when you talk about crossing and cross, talking across the aisle, we're so far apart we can't do it. And that is part of what I believe is the discourse, not only in Texas, and let's be realistic, it hasn't been much discourse because the Republicans control everything. There are lots of times they don't even need us to show up in the room. But look at where we are nationally. And so I do believe, just as you mentioned, restoring our democracy is not only getting out and voting this November, but ensuring that the playing field state in every state race through this act of redistricting is allowed to be fair. And so that's what I'd like to see. Make them fair this time, implement an independent commission going forward so that you can completely remove us from it. And then when we talk about voter suppression issues, you know, you can do anything on the internet. I'm so glad to meet you guys by Zoom across the nation on the internet. But you know what, I can't register to vote in Texas on the internet. Um, I can't, photo ID that was passed. Let me tell you about Texas definition of what's a good authentic photo ID to come in and vote. If you're going to the University of Texas, a state of Texas higher institution that requires and gives you a photograph for your ID, that is not qualified to come in and vote. But if you happen to go get a concealed handgun license that you can do just in a couple hours at a strip mall, that is a valid enough identification to go vote. And so that lets you know exactly where Republicans have been in this process. And so we are talking about, we are up against Governor Greg Abbott, Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick. If you're not aware of Texas, you probably know about these two guys and the irrational stuff that they say that's extremely partisan. We just, we're in the fight to take one chamber. And we only have a shot at taking this one chamber right now because of the extreme redistricting that they did 10 years ago. And so that is why I ran again this time. I've been here before. I have seen what they will do when they don't want you to win. But it is why I am running this time because this race is worth a decade. And so now here we are in COVID. So I'll just go into your next moment of what do we do? Or we're again running a great race and we all get hit with this global health pandemic that I always thought, okay, there's an extreme point of partisanship for these people and it's gonna break. 
And I would have thought the global pandemic and literally hundreds of thousands of people dying would be that moment. And we have seen that it's not. We have suffered in Texas with we're going to reopen and by goodness, we're not going to wear a mask because I have my personal liberty and freedom. I love that some people have recognized, yes, we have liberty and freedom, but we're always assuming we're going to make these decisions with a moral compass. And so here we are. Our moral compass gets restored in November. So we're doing what we're doing with you. We're on Zoom. We're phone banking. We are trying to contact voters at every turn, but we're being safe in this pandemic. We're not exposing our community to the health risk of COVID because we've been a hot spot. And so the normal opportunity to knock on doors is done. And it has put a big shift on this race because this was an expensive race that got a whole lot more expensive the moment COVID hit. Because we're not now talking about having to increase media, uh, mail, whatever else we can do to get the message out. And that's why I'm so grateful that you guys would have us here to take a look at this race. Um, and see if you can help us in any way. Uh, phone banking, volunteering. The nice thing is you can participate from wherever you are because we're now virtual. Uh, but that's what we're needing and what we're doing in the campaign. Well, we're certainly gonna gear up and do some phone banking for you. Um, I think one of the magic things about this is typically in past years, we focused on states that are close to us um, and canvassed for them. Um, Austin's on the call. He has an infamous minivan where he just packs us full and we go canvas for everybody. So we're very sad that we can't do that. Um, and I'm not, I'm going to be perfectly honest, phone banking is not a sexy volunteer opportunity. It's not, it's a hard sell, but this is a hard year and we all have to do yeah. hard things. Um, so phone banking, postcards, and if you say, hey, I really support you guys and I want to help you, throw us a contribution. Uh, the other crazy thing about our race in Texas, no limits. So if you had somebody that had an extra million dollars and wanted to give to this race, you could. And let me tell you what I'm up against. I'm up against a Republican incumbent that's going to have a ton of money. And Republicans know they have to keep this seat to keep the House. So we are not joking ourselves when we say they are going to back up the Brinks truck to try to um, save it. So while we don't expect that we can outraise the Republicans, we just need to raise enough to message. And so that's the good news. We don't have to outraise. We just have to raise enough to message. And so if you can help us there, that'd be great as well. Yeah, and I think it's also important to note that this is a state house seat. This is, so for the price of one congressional seat, you could flip the state, the Texas state house multiple times. Um, so congressional campaigns are literally millions of dollars. The example I like to use is John Ossoff. I donated to a special election campaign. He raised $23 million and broke every fundraising record, and he still lost. If you had taken that $23 million and spread it all around, you could have spread it around the entire South, frankly. Um, mm -hmm. But if you had taken a fraction of that $23 million, put it into Georgia state house races, you would have flipped the state house, and you, Stacey Abrams would not be doing fair fight. She'd be the governor of Georgia right now and would have bigger stuff going on. Um, so that's a very important message. Uh, excuse me. Hi. Good night. Love you. <laughs> okay. No, 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 no. Sorry. Okay. Yep. He's not naked. He's not naked. <laughs> um, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> okay. Can you please? Bye. Um, <laughs> So this is great, live. Uh, we're not live, it. recorded. We can edit. That's our... live. That's where we are. We're all there, so don't worry. <laughs> um, anyway, so um, we are absolutely pushing people to donate to you um, because we know that that is really the way that this can matter, that we can make a big difference. Um, even $25 goes a long way, but if you could dig deep, if you got that stimulus check and you're not using it, this is a perfect place to throw that check with Donald Trump's name on it. This is a perfect place. And when you donate to these elections, you fight gerrymandering. Uh, the Guardian just put out an article today that said if you're trying to fight um, racial, structural racism, these are the races. These are the bodies that are deciding um, police funding, what your police laws look like, what is, what is um, excessive force. You gave us amazing examples earlier um, with child trafficking and you know victim victims' rights and what our laws look like. This is where we really need to be putting that pressure. Um, so it's 727. Do you have any final, I, there's a hurricane coming your way. We'd like to be very respectful of your time. Um, do you want to close us out? Uh, so Monica asks, 
how many seats are needed to flip Texas? And if you just want to close us out with that number and anything else, that would be great. We need nine and we are the number one seat to flip. We're in a great position to win it, but we need nine. And so we're grateful for your support here. We're grateful your, for your support with any other Democratic other candidates that are running to try to flip their se seats. Um, this is a team effort. It's, it, we, we need to win and we need to lift everybody else to make sure that they win as well. And yes, we are facing uh, Laura barreling down us on the Gulf Coast. We were talking about it earlier. Um, it's going to be probably a historic storm. They're expecting um, a 20 feet um, storm surge which is gonna inundate Louisiana and parts of the Texas border by 40 miles in the coast. And so there are a lot of people outside of our area that are gonna be hurting from not only COVID, but the storm. And so we know how important it is to fight to protect individuals like that. So keep them in your thoughts. And uh, again, thank you so much for having me on to talk about the importance of this race. Well, we can't thank you enough. Um, and please stay safe. Um, we're fighting for you and we're going to do everything we can to get you elected. Thank so, you. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, thank you. We're going to take a little break um, and we're going to get Jasmine um, Taylor, who's from Montana, on the line with us. Now, Jasmine's race is totally different. You can be a max out donor in Montana for $180. So, and you could give thousands Give Anne as much money as you possibly can. Jasmine, you could only give $180. It's very exciting. Um, so thank you so much, Anne. Um, we're just gonna take a little break and I'll be right back. <laughs> 